This is a free sample of the book Rise Above Rejection by Cairo Copeland. The first half of this book is posted right here on YouTube, free for everyone to listen to. If you like this content and want to hear or read the rest or want to listen to it free of ads, visit reinventideal.com slash reject. The book is available on Kindle, paperback, and Audible at reinventideal.com slash reject. Chapter 1. How likely are rejections statistically? To be male in today's world is to be a referee that makes calls against the home team. The fans watching will boo and wave their middle fingers at him. But he must continue to do his duty and make calls. The ref does not cower and chicken out of calling more penalties on the home team because of how the fans react. He continues being himself. Past rejections in a world that devalues your existence just for being male, with myths of male privilege and toxic masculinity, hinder your ability to do this. It's hard to be yourself when others outright discard you, and even the biology you were born with is considered unacceptable to a world that follows a female primary pecking order. By effect, this would make rejection the default expectation. A catch-22 exists now. To have a legitimate existence, the world says you need to have a woman. It's 100% expected of you. Your life is not in good standing with society without one. But that world also says you're bad just for being male and tells women you don't need no man. It's a lose-lose scenario where even if you manage to win, anxiety still arises. When a woman's hypergamous nature kicks in and deems you insufficient, even if it's years into the relationship, she has society's approval to cut and run. This results in most guys settling for less, as it serves as a buffer. They miss out on better women and a more ideal male life because the sting of rejection is so terrifying. But what if the case was that the sting is only bad because of your perceptions? What if the pain it causes and the issues that accompany it were all in your head? You get hurt badly and make poor decisions because you're looking at things the wrong way. Perception, however, becomes reality. To see things a different way gives you the power to avoid the pointless suffering that so many willfully accept. Rejections are normal. That is the fact of the matter. I wish it weren't the case, but no genie exists to grant me that wish. The natural default of life and the universe is difficulty. Even in the earliest days of humanity, life was extremely difficult. One couldn't just exist, rather, one had to always remain on guard because at any moment, a predator could have devoured them. In today's world, we have more than just predators that threaten our peaceful existence and the potential to be content. There are billions and billions of people occupying the planet. With each person, there are hundreds of motivations for those who make decisions that are detrimental to your happiness or prosperity. The one positive from this is that their decisions rarely have anything to do with you personally. An employer may decide to lay you off with hundreds of your colleagues. To him, you're just a number on a spreadsheet. He's not singling you out as a shitty person. A lender may turn you down for credit. Often that's only a matter of your profile not fitting the algorithm, which is probably outdated. It has nothing to do with your worthiness. A hiring manager may send you an email turning you down for the job you really wanted. Many times the posting about the job opening was only put up so they could fulfill some requisite of HR law. They already had a candidate in mind that they wanted to hire but legally still had to make the opening public. Most hiring decisions are like this and they don't even bother to look at the other resumes. And there are many more contextual variables for each one of these scenarios. Women are no different with their decisions for exploring a potential romance. They're overwhelmed with contextual variables. In today's brutal dating market, women have too many options, and their phone is practically a bag of dicks any time they want one. Throughout the rest of nature, rejections are quite normal too. Mediterranean fruit flies go through an elaborate series of steps to find a mate. 
The male does all sorts of singing, dancing, and signaling to get female attention, but their rejection rate is 90%. There's just so much randomness. There are so many people. You are only one of them. Getting their heads around this concept is quite difficult for most guys. As deductive problem solvers, they are led to believe that they will get out of something what they put into it, such as a good grade on a test they studied extensively for, or getting a bonus for great performance on the job. But when they send the most thoughtful, initiating messages to a woman on a dating site to get nothing back, or a negative reply, they don't understand. Most of the time, she may have never even seen your message, which drives these guys into greater despair because it explicitly screams out to them that life is not fair. Fairness is a fantasy. There is not a single thing in this world that is fair. Life itself is the most unfair arrangement ever composed. Innocent children are born with bone cancer. Tesla makes horrible cars for consumers and the environment it claims to love, but somehow makes a fortune for its investors. The dumb guy you know at work gets the promotion instead of you just because he's better looking, and we all know a douchebag that has a girlfriend he doesn't deserve. To hope for fairness is to hope for Skittles to rain down from the sky. To believe that we live in a just world is to believe in a flat earth. These words do very little for you now, because you've spent years getting thrashed and harmed by disapproval. Further, when that disapproval occurred, you felt singled out and watched everyone seem to have it better. The poisonous hellhole of social media has further perpetuated that misperception. We only assume rejections are to be taken personally because we are self-important. A person thinks from their ego, which is what causes you to believe you are the only one it happens to. Part of this is because early on in adolescence, you felt no one understood you. Suppose you were dumped on in your youth by your peers and opened up to your parents about it. What they likely did was fill your head with horse shit. They probably told you, Oh son, she's crazy for not going with you to the dance. Something is wrong with her for not realizing how great you are. And that registers as horseshit right away because the girl that turned you down is clearly valuable to you since you asked her out. Your perception is unable to agree with this because it conflicts with the fact that you liked the rejector and wanted to be liked by them in return. So you continue to believe that something is wrong with you. The intensity of this angst doubles and triples with time. Your crush never notices you despite you winning the contest of fantasizing about them the most. Your undeveloped brain begins to believe you are inadequate and unworthy. You think there's something wrong with you without having any idea what it looks like to have everything right with you. This is quite tragic, because the undeveloped brain never has a proportionate reaction to a rejection. It's always the end of the world. You find yourself having to accept one of three possibilities. One, that you're a loser. Two, that since the person you seek doesn't notice you, you must become successful to be noticed. You must show them and spite them. Or three, worst of all, that the world is a horrible place and an all-around shithole. This is known as the black pill. Many people tend to choose the second possibility. What a great source of motivation, they think. But this is a deadly trap. Satisfying success is the result of intentional effort toward a specific goal with intense focus, but the person who is motivated by spite will blindly chase success only to please others. Their motivation is not self-satisfaction, rather the satisfaction of others which they are not even guaranteed to have. The drive to prove something to another person requires that other person to actually give a shit, which they don't. The only person that cares about what happens to you is you. And the same is true for them. They are only invested in what happens to them. He who seeks the approval of others is he who does not approve of himself. Worse yet, should they not achieve that success, they become more bitter than possibility number three and swallow the black pill. That's where many MGTOWs and guys that have gone dark reside. They see the worst of hypergamy in women and think all women are like that. All women are cunts, they scream. Hold that belief and see how far you get in today's female primary pecking order. What then 
is the correct alternate belief and perception to have when one is rejected. Continue listening, because this is the silver bullet you've been looking for. Thank you for listening to this free sample of the book Rise Above Rejection by Cairo Copeland. If you enjoyed it and want to hear or read the rest or want to listen to it free of ads, visit reinventideal.com slash reject. The book is available on Kindle, paperback, and audible at reinventideal.com slash reject.